Hi guys, <clears throat> my name is Ara and this is Rose Ara's Investments. So the topic of today's video is 10 ways to save $100,000. Before I start, I want to say that I am a new channel, so I appreciate all the thumbs up and I would appreciate if you guys can share this on any kind of social media like Facebook or Instagram. So I have generally in life not made a huge amount of money, but I've been able to save up a good amount of money. Uh, because I save money in different ways and on top of saving I keep that money invested So I thought I'd make a video about 10 ways to save up your first $100,000 so Something like gas gas is a huge expense for everyone. So the type of person that drives a Honda Civic uh, versus the type of person that drives like a 3 series BMW um, of course, the BMW is going to cost more initially, but I don't think uh, many people understand exactly how much more that 3 Series BMW costs. They're approximately the same size. Um, of course, the BMW is uh, a little bit more fun to drive because uh, the engine is a little bit better. So let's say over the course of 10 years, um, the average person drives 150,000 miles. The person that drives the Honda Civic is going to spend, about, I mean, it's going to use about 4,300 gallons of gas over 10 years, and they're going to spend about $12,000 total in gas. Now, the person that drives the 3 Series BMW, they are going to get a little bit worse gas mileage. It's not a tremendous difference, but it is worse gas, gas mileage. Um, so they're going to use about 6,000 gallons of gas, and they're probably going to get the 93 grade gas instead of the 87. So their gas is going to cost a little bit more. So I'm guessing... $2.80 for the Civic and $3.20 for the 3 Series BMW. So over the course of 10 years, the Civic might spend $12,000 in gas and the 3 Series BMW might spend $19,200. $12,000, is a $7,200 difference. So you can save up $7,200 over 10 years. So the second thing is credit cards. So credit cards, some people use them the wrong way and some people use them the right way. So credit cards can be a very, very useful tool. And if you charge up everything throughout the month and then you pay off 100% of the balance, you never have to pay any interest. If you pay off 100% of the money you owe every single month, you never have to pay any interest. So it gets even better than that. A lot of credit cards offer 3% cash back on stuff like groceries and gas. You have to do a little research to find out which ones. Um, I use the Bank of America card. I don't know the exact details, but I get something like 3% cash back on gas and 2% cash back on groceries or vice versa. So over the course of years and years, this really adds up. So if you're the type of person to spend only $300 a month, then over 10 years, over 120 months, um, that's $36,000 you're spending. And that's not even including um, other stuff like uh, money you spend on vacations and stuff like that. So you can get uh, cash back on a significant amount of things. Um, there, I'm sure there are better credit cards uh, if you want to do the work. I know Fidelity had a credit card where you could get 2% um, cash back and it automatically gets deposited into your Fidelity account. I think Discover had a credit card that was 5% cash back. So just to ballpark this, I'm just going to say you save uh, $1,500 over the course of 10 years. Uh, the third thing is a big one, and it's groceries. So there's a big difference in the amount you can spend. You can go to uh, stores like PriceRight, but if you don't want to go to a store like PriceRight, you can actually go to a, store, a regular store like Stop and Shop. And they're always having buy one, get one free offers or... They're always having offers like you can buy this jar of peanut butter for uh, $2.50 if you get two for $5 uh, versus uh, normally the regular price is four sixty nine, dollars So you save a couple bucks on peanut butter. But if you're constantly getting the brand that's on sale, if you're constantly getting the brand of bread that's on sale, um, you're going to save up a significant amount of money. So I'm just estimating this um, at... I don't know, a few thousand dollars a year. I mean, it, it's going to be at least uh, three or four thousand dollars a year that you save. So this is this is a really big one, and I'm going to put this number at uh, thirty-five thousand over the course of uh, ten years. Um, people that uh, save money when they shop 
um, they, they just save up significantly more money. Uh, it's, it's a very, very big difference and it's a very big cost in life. And you can pretty much eat just as well and not spend more money if you're, if you're looking for the brands that are discounted that week. Um, bread, peanut butter, you know, stuff like that. Um, there's, there's always deals on all kinds of stuff. Uh, one thing that I always buy is the, uh, the fresh roasted chicken that's fully cooked and tastes delicious, and that's only $5. So if you get something like that over going to uh, someplace like uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken for an eight-piece meal, uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken for the same thing is going to cost you uh, $12 to $15, and it's top and shop, it's $5, and it tastes so, so delicious. Um, a lot of people I know um, get that. Uh, so restaurants, uh, like fast food. Fast food, we'll put that one next. Uh, so fast food restaurants, um, they're already pretty inexpensive. Uh, not so much compared to the grocery store. They've probably come out to the, uh, the same amount you'd spend on a meal. But obviously, going to a grocery store is healthier. But if you are going to get fast food, there are lots and lots of apps now. So uh, me and a lot of my coworkers, uh, even the guys that make $200,000 a year in the finance department, um, they still get McDonald's on a daily basis in the app. Lots of times it has buy one, get one free offers. Um, or you can get like, um, you can buy a bacon, egg and cheese sandwich for three bucks or something and get the second one for a penny. So there are lots of situations where you can save um, just, just loads and loads of money. Um, so I'm going to put that at 1500 bucks a year that you can save because, you know, we all plan on not eating fast food, but we actually do it. And uh, over the course of 10 years, if you are just buying whatever is on sale, um, you know, whether it's the quarter pounder that's on sale, the Big Mac that's on sale, whatever it is, uh, if you just buy the one that's on sale versus the one that's full price, um, you just save loads of money throughout the year. Um, same thing with Subway. They always have uh, $5.99 deals. If you buy the sandwich that's $5 versus the one that's $8 every single day, right there you're saving $3 a day. That's $1,000 a year. Um, so, you know, you're not going to eat Subway every single day, but, you know, in some way, if you save three or four bucks every single day, that's 1500 bucks a year you're saving. Um, and we all do it. We all plan on not eating fast food, but we all do it. So uh, next on the list is clothes. And clothes are the same thing as fast food. Um, we all need clothes. We all need to wear clothes. Um, but there are lots and lots of ways to save clothes. Like, uh, for example, like something like socks don't really matter. So you can buy like the 10 pack of socks and it doesn't really matter if you get Hanes or Fruit of the Loom, but you know, you can usually find um, a discount and like, why not buy the one on discount? Um, same thing when you want to buy like shirts or jeans or something, like you can go to Kohl's, get like 20% off coupons, um, get like $10 cash back. And so a $50 pair of jeans ends up being like $25 and you can save a lot of money on clothes. Um, I do this for my daughter. Um, her mom buys her clothes all the time and uh, we do, we do buy a lot of clothes, but we also um, seem to get a lot of discounts and we end up uh, just accumulating a lot of clothes. So um, <clears throat> if you're always looking for the deals, um, you're going to inherently be saving up a lot of money uh, versus just going out, buying something and not doing any research. And a lot of times it only takes like a minute of research uh, just to find uh, the deals. <clears throat> uh, next, I put uh, drinks and um, referring to both alcohol and uh, coffee and stuff like that, like stuff like that we don't need to drink. Um, if you want to drink water, there's always uh, lots of free options. Like, I don't know if you want to drink from the sink. I drink a lot of bottled water. But if, you, uh, if you're going to drink alcohol, like, I think it's obvious that if you pay $5 for a beer at a bar, uh, you can get that same beer for around $1.20 uh, if you buy it at the liquor store. Uh, just invite friends over, watch the basketball game instead of going to a bar. You save huge amounts of money. Um, same thing with coffee. Like I have the Keurig coffee maker, which costs a couple hundred dollars, but compared to the amount that you would spend if you go and get Dunkin' Donuts coffee versus making it at home yourself, the actual Dunkin' Donuts brand, uh, it tastes terrific. I, I've been drinking, uh, the coffee bun coffee and I've been drinking, um, uh, what else? I don't know what I've been drinking. Um, the hazelnut coffee. Um, it just ends up to huge amounts of money. You know, those pods, you can find them on sale at Stop and Shop. The actual Dunkin' Donut brand, which is my favorite, um, you can find them for like $3.99 for a 10-pack or a 12-pack uh, versus buying 10 or 12 coffees at Dunkin' Donuts is way, way, way more money. So you can easily save $30 a week. Uh, you don't have to cut down your 
uh, coffee consumption. You don't have to cut down your alcohol consumption, but there's usually like a much, much cheaper way to, uh, to buy drinks than, um, you know, going out and paying like full retail price. Uh, number seven on my list, uh, doesn't apply to everyone. Cigarettes. So number seven, uh, I mean, this, this is an enormous one. Uh, if you smoke, uh, you, you just know you need to quit. So this is, I'll put this at like 40,000 for 10 years. Uh, because over the course of a year, you easily spend $4,000. So over the course of 10 years, that's $40,000. Uh, that one doesn't apply to anyone. So if you quit smoking, um, actually save the money, actually invest the money. You could become a millionaire just from quitting smoking alone. Uh, you waste so much money on that. Uh, number eight is uh, car repairs. So uh, I sell Hondas now. And... Um, you know, I don't actually work in the service uh, section, but I see a lot of people, there's, there's loads of people coming into the service department. And um, I'm actually a customer there too. Um, I have a car, I get my car fixed as well. Um, but going back to that Civic versus uh, 3 Series example, um, Civics are perfectly fine cars. They last for a couple hundred thousand miles. They're approximately the same as a BMW 3 Series. Um, the BMW has more prestige to it, but there is not too many things that make the uh, 3 Series BMW much nicer. It is a little nicer, um, but you can get a Civic with leather seats. You can get a 3 Series with leather seats. You can get a, uh, a Civic um, that feels very fast. You can get a 3 Series BMW that feels very fast. You're not going to win in any races with either one. Um, you can get a Civic with nice rims. You can get a 3 Series with nice rims. But anyway, going back to the repair costs, the repair costs in a Civic, I mean, it's like 20 to thirty dollars to get an oil change for a Civic, and you don't need to go to a specific place that charges you forty or fifty. Um, you can get a regular oil change, and a Civic is going to last you a very, very long time. It's a very well-made car um, versus a BMW, which costs well over a hundred dollars for an oil change, um, and that goes for everything. And when you need tires for a Civic, uh, it's going to cost you ninety dollars for each new tire, so three hundred sixty dollars for four new tires, and a BMW might cost you two hundred fifty dollars per tire. So um, car repairs, I mean, you're easily going to save uh, $2,000 a year in repairs, uh, maybe $1,000 a year. Um, but, you know, people that have BMWs spend so much money fixing their cars. Uh, they're nice, and, you, and sometimes you don't notice it because you only do it like once or twice a year. But getting that bill, if you could save that money instead of spending that money, um, you know, you're easily going to save $2,000 a year times 10 is going to be $20,000. I mean, yeah, $20,000 over 10 years. Um, so it's just going to be a huge amount of money. Uh, the next one is also a big one. Um, people that do stuff that requires tips, like uh, takeout delivery. So, like, if you order pizza from Domino's, uh, first of all, you should be ordering the deal, uh, like I said in number four. But uh, second of all, you can go get the pizza yourself. You don't need it to be delivered. And so you can order uh, two pizzas for, like, 13 bucks at Domino's. But when you get that delivered, that's another four or five dollars, and then for the delivery charge, and then it's another uh, like four or five dollars for a tip because you want to tip the guy, especially if he brings it up to your your apartment if you live on the third floor or something like that. So um, you know, right there, you could save like eight dollars uh, every time you get a couple of pizzas from Domino's. So whatever you do, you know, save the delivery charge and uh, you know save the money for the tip, and and you know do a little bit of the work yourself. And actually do that. Or you could just cook at home. Um, you could easily, uh, you know, make a pizza. Um, it's not that hard. My family used to do it. I don't do it myself. But you could cook at home, you know, make pasta with meat sauce and, you know, all kinds of good stuff. And home cooked food is usually better than takeout anyway. So uh, right there, you could easily save a couple thousand dollars a year. And uh, I'll put that one at uh, another $20,000. Um, cause I mean, you can easily save 2000 bucks. Actually, I'm going to put that as more, um, you know, you got to save at least $3,000 a year by being smarter about takeout, saving money on tips, saving money on delivery charges. Um, uh, my buddy that owns a pizza restaurant, it's ridiculous when people get like a $16 meal and then the bill comes to like $28 because of, uh, uh, delivery driver's fee, uh, tip tax. Um, so it's ridiculous. So $3,000 a year times, um, 10 years is uh, $30,000. And the last one I'm going to put down here is uh, taxis. Uh, let's write uh, taxi, Uber, Lyft. Uh, not everyone takes these all the time, but when you do, um, it can be expensive, um, especially if you live in a place like New York City or uh, Boston where uh, public transportation is, is a very 
easy and readily available. Um, so, you know, if you just put a little bit more effort and plan out your trip, um, now you're not always going to be able to take public transportation instead of taking a taxi or instead of taking a Lyft or Uber, uh, but sometimes you can, and it it does save you a lot of money. Um, when I lived in New York, we we did take a lot of um, a lot of Uber, and we took some taxis, but once we cut those out. Um, we decided to kind of, uh, you know, just take the train more and it's a little bit more waiting. Um, I'd say like taking the train is probably an average of like five minutes more. Um, that's in Manhattan anyway. I don't know what it is in Boston, but you know, if it is similar and you can find a cheaper way for transportation, um, you know, just do it. And, you know, let's put that at $500 a year times 10 years is uh, $5,000 over 10 years. So I'm just going to uh, sum these up and let's see if I can see if I can figure out how to do this. Nope. Clearly I didn't rehearse this ahead of time. All right, well, it adds up to 183,000. So you can save 183,000 over 10 years if you, if you do all of these. Uh, and I'm sure most people don't do all of these. Um, like not everyone smokes cigarettes, not everyone uses a uh, Lyft or something. Uh, not everyone wastes money on fast food, but you know, it's just showing you the point of like how much you can save without even investing just by being smarter about the way that you, uh, that the way that you spend your money. So if it takes you 10 years to save a hundred thousand dollars, if you actually save this money every year and every year you're actually like investing $10,000 a year, um, you know, with the goal of, you know, saving up a hundred thousand dollars, you're actually going to be way, way past a hundred thousand dollars. And you can become a millionaire within 20 years. Uh, you can, you know, make uh, saving up a couple hundred thousand dollars your 10-year goal and becoming a millionaire your 20-year goal. Um, it's very possible, and there are many, many people in the world that have become millionaires over the course of 20 years. So I hope this uh, video gives you some ideas and uh, gives you some uh, motivation. And uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And uh, please leave me comments if you if you know another way that I missed that you can save a lot of money.